Hey, what's up everybody? Evan with Fishing Life 101 here. And today we are going to go carp fishing. And I'm planning on doing a carp catch clean cook if we can actually catch a few. And not just catch a few, I wanna catch a smaller one to be able to do that. I don't wanna be flaying a large carp because I've never tried carp before and neither has my family. It has a lot of stigma in America. So most people I've talked to have never even tried it. Some people have, and most of the time I hear positive feedback from it, but most people who haven't tried it think it would be a gross fish. They couldn't imagine eating it. So we're gonna find out what's really true today. I've seen a lot of, I've seen some positive videos on YouTube, but I've never tried it myself. So I'm just getting the gear set up here today. Now I'll be using a total of three rods since it's just myself. Normally if my family's with me, I'll have a little bit more, but I only have three rods that really work well for carp. For bait today, we're gonna to be using the classic pack bait that I've used a few times here. I have some of the boilies already in here. Hopefully they'll get a little bit of smell on them of the other stuff. And I have more stuff in the truck if, that, if that's not enough for us. It's a great day out here. It's right just in the low 70s, so it is beautiful out. It's supposed to rain later, so I'm wanting to get out now so I can try to get some fishing in before it rains and messes everything up. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm really excited about getting started today. There's carp rolling everywhere. You can see them jumping in the water. If you look right out here, the carp are just rolling right out there. Right over there too, there's another section. I don't know if I can quite hit over there, but I can hit here for sure. I can hit right here. I've seen big carp jumping all over the place. So I'm pretty excited to get started. Got the three rods and reels set up right here. I'm gonna be just trying to cast them out, just trying to fan them over the place. Trying to see what we can get. Got one on here, guys. Got one pulling, cart number one for the day. Uh, turn the drag up. Go ahead. Uh, we have here. Yeah, he's still on. Oh, yeah, we're gonna go like, right around here. There we go. Now he's fighting. Yeah, making a run for it. At first, he was kind of just running into the side. Go ahead and get him in. Oh, he's not done fighting yet. Tell you what guys, this is just a beautiful carp hooked right in the lower lip. I'll show you guys why we use the hair rigs. See where that hook is? Right in the lower lip, it's easy to get out. Exactly what we want. There's carp number one today guys. Nice sized carp. He probably weighs about four pounds or so. I'll go ahead and let him back. We're gonna try to get another one today to eat even though this would be a pretty good size. Great little carp. Got some fresh pack bait here, guys. About the consistency that you're wanting. This is the pack bait that I normally use. I just ran out of it. So I had to go back to my truck, and get a little bit more of this. So I'm gonna be baiting up the rods and throwing them back out. I think we might have something big on here. This thing almost pulled the rod in. Yep. Yep. I think this might be a real nice size one, possibly. And he hit it hard enough. He's just stripping drag. I have the drag turned all the way on on this, too. Almost. I don't want to have everything in because I don't want to pull it out of his lip or anything. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
big one and again just hooked right in the god dang it come on buddy i like trying to keep the carp in the net because this rubberized net they won't get hurt like they will in the land because carp lose their scales rather easily I'm thinking he's a good six pounds at least okay so we'll weigh him keep in mind the net weighs 1.3 pounds so you guys will see it on there so 7.52 pounds is what he weighs. That's a new personal best. So we're definitely gonna let this big guy go. I don't want seven and a half pounds of carp. I'd really like something about half his size, much closer to what that first carp was. So I got a measurement on him. It's not exact by any means, but he's right at about 26 inches long, but I just wanna get him back in the water. That's probably a little bit over 10 pounds of carp for the day. Go ahead and get rigged up and get it back out. Uh, probably closer to 11, probably about 11 pounds of carp for today. Maybe a hair or more. I'm gonna go ahead and get this rigged back up and throw it back out and see if we can't get another one. On here guys, that's the third one on this rod. They've all been on this one. Turn down the drag. Yeah, another nice carp. I think that might have just pulled out of them. Yep. That hook must not been in very well. I didn't have anything on real tight. I didn't have my drag up real far, but it did pull them right out. Darn it. I'm trying to get one more so I can do the catch, cook, and clean. I just didn't want to clean that big guy. The first carp probably would have been about the optimal size, but I didn't want to just go ahead home just yet. I wanted to catch more than one carp on the day. We'll see. So here's been our setup today. We have the pack bait on the method lead, and then we have that down to a hook. This is called a hair rig. We, uh, I put two boilies on here, and then I have a bait stop right on there. I pull the boilie right up to that so it stays on. I like putting two pieces of corn on the hook, just in case if the boilies fall off, there's still something there on the hook for the fish to take. What I'll do is I'll take this hook and I'll tuck it in this dough ball. put it right in like that and then that's ready to cast I'll leave about uh, about 18 inches or so a line reel this in just a little bit whenever you first start casting for carp it's a little bit different whenever you're throwing the pack bait out you can't just rip it out there like you can fishing for a catfish or something like that and that's because the pack bait doesn't stick on the method lead near as well as what a big chunk of fish will stick on a hook. So you can still get it out there far, it just takes a much smoother motion. You can't just generate the force all at once and sling it out. That's why it takes such a long swing to go over back, it's to keep the pack bait on. You guys can see right over here, there's a bunch of geese. A big flock of them flew in. And now that's the only spot that has shade right now. So that's where they're all hanging out, is trying to find a little bit of shade. That's pretty hot out here. Really hoping for just to get a smaller carp here pretty soon so I can go ahead and go back to the house and get some shade because there's no shade around here at all. Oh, looks like that might be the one. Is that it? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it is, guys. I just had a bite there. Ideally, you don't really want much, if at all, if any pack bait on there when you reel it back in. The idea of the pack bait is to work basically like chum, and that's for it to fall off whenever it gets into the water, to chum around where the hook is. So we had something on, but we just were not able to land it. But that happens sometimes. You're never going to get all of them that you hook into. But typically, you get quite a few with the hair rig, though. Typically, not too many of them get away. 
But the other thing is that that could always be a turtle or a fish or you know a bluegill or something like that just not taking it all because the hair rig helps keep those kind of fish off. If you have a smaller fish, they're not going to be able to get on the hook a lot of times because they're going to be biting in one of these doe baits. Their mouth just simply isn't big enough to get on that hook too. So that's going to keep a lot of your bluegill off. Turtles will sit there and bite at it though, so they can still get on there. So we're getting about to the end of the line here today, guys. We don't have too much time left. I have all my baits gone. I baited up the last rods and thrown that out. I wouldn't have mind bringing more bait today if I would have thought that it wasn't going to be quite as sunny. Go ahead and tighten this line up a little bit. It was overcast when I got here and the sun was out pretty strong today. And I forgot my sunglasses, so that's not been the best either. So the intention of this video was to do a carp clutch clean and cook, but it looks like that's gonna have to wait for the future. Hey guys, so we're back out here for day two of the carping adventure to try to do a catch clean cook on carp. Day one, we had two really nice fish. The one would have been perfect for doing the catch clean cook but unfortunately we got him pretty early and I wasn't ready to quit fishing yet so we're back out here again for today we had the same bait that we had before made some more uh, pack bait we have the boilies on there too they're sticking off on the hair rig we're gonna throw this back out we're gonna try to catch another small one but hopefully we can catch a few of them today it's a real nice day out we haven't seen the carp rolling like they did yesterday whenever we were out here or a couple days ago but it looks like it should be a real nice morning. It's actually pretty cool out. I'm starting to turn a little cooler for the fall. Go ahead and get it, Daxton. No, turn the top, turn the drag up. Still on there? Yeah. He's still on you. Yep, I I feel the wiggle. Yeah, he's still on there, that's for sure. First car for the day, probably. Oh! <laughs> Hold on to it. Yeah. Good job, Daxton. this bad boy. Okay, now pull them over. Yeah, good job, Daxton. That's our eating size. Yep, I think this is our one that we're going to be able to take home, guys. Hooked right in the side of the mouth, just like the other ones are. So we'll weigh this one in a few minutes, but that's a pretty good sized carp. He's probably three and a half, four pounds. This is what we're looking for. If you guys think that these fish look small, and whenever we tell you the weight, it seems kind of high, you can look how thick these fish are. They're, they're built like a torpedo. They're super thick. For their length, they're a lot heavier than like a catfish or a bass or something comparable like that. Really nice fish though. We're gonna put him in a cooler. That's the same carp that Daxon pulled in. He just wanted to show the camera. Here, let's put his tail out. So that fish is actually five and a quarter pounds. I didn't think he was quite that big, but he's a pretty good sized fish, I guess. Dax is pretty proud of that one. He reeled him in all by himself. Okay, let's put him back now, Dax. You said put him back. Yep, there you go. So there's two rods right now that have been getting taps on them. And that's kind of common whenever you're carp fishing. It could be the carp in the area, and they're just kind of eating around it and running into it, or it's turtles that are pulling bait off. You can see Daxon just having a blast pulling around that carp. We'll go ahead and throw this back out. Oh, what that thing is Oh, there was just a carp that jumped up out there. 
Hope you guys saw that was a common carp that jumped straight out of the water. I'm starting to see a few more out now. I guess I had to warm up for them. So we're gonna go ahead and start packing up, guys. We've been out here for a little while. We've caught one nice carp. Had some other decent bites, but we've not really been able to get anything else online. But we got what we came here for today. We got a little bit smaller carp than what we had yesterday or the day before. So we're gonna go home, take the carp home, and, and show you how to clean the carp, and then we'll probably fix it tomorrow. We like to let them in salt water for about a day. Stay tuned, guys. So now we have the carp ready to flay. I'm just showing where to cut right here. You're gonna start cutting right behind the head like you would most of the fish. But on a carp, since the scales are so big and thick, you need to try to scale it a little first. And be sure to use the back of the knife so you're not gonna dull the blade whenever you're trying to scale it like that. And I really think next time I would just scale the whole fish because it was kind of hard to get the skin off of it because I didn't have it scaled all the way first. You're just going to make an incision right in there, right after you scale the fish right there. And then you're just going to follow the back down after you cut through there. So a carp is really not that much different than us. Now a carp does have a big sturdy rib cage that you're not going to be able to cut through. As you can see here, whenever I'm cutting this flay down, there's really not that much difference between a carp and most other fish. It's just that a carp's a lot bigger than most other fish that you're going to clean but it flays the same way, just go right down the fish and that's basically it. So what you're left with guys is really a nice big flay. It's a little, it's red and it's not, it's not nearly as white as like your other meat, like bass or bluegill or anything like that. But it's really nice looking flay. I was kind of surprised. So these are the flays after you take the skin off of them. They look a little bit different. I was just showing the red meat that's on them there. And I've heard that you're supposed to cut the red meat off of the flays. And I've, I don't know if that makes them taste better or not. It just sounds like it is. Although I've heard some of them that they say they've never noticed a difference. But I'm going to go ahead and take it off just to be on the safe side. Rest assured though, the red meat that I removed from the flays, it didn't go to waste. I saved that for going catfishing in the future since carp should work pretty good for that. So I cleaned up the flays and then I put them in salt water and this is what we're left with. So we're gonna fix these tomorrow or the next day. I like to let them soak in salt water for about a day or so. So that's all there is to it guys. So now we're ready for the cooking portion. So what we have here, we have all the carp flays in here, which we are going to kind of cube up a little bit. And we're just gonna make this with the regular like a regular fry, pan frying stuff. We have the egg wash, we're gonna put it in first. And second here, this is a mixture of half and half, breadcrumbs, and then cornmeal. Makes it nice and crispy. Now this is the first time that we're ever gonna try carp. So just mix that up. Then you can put whatever seasoning you want in. I'm just gonna put some of this Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Ranch. Put some of that in, but not too much. It's kind of spicy. But really, it's just whatever you want. Put some Lowry seasoned salt in. Mix that around. I already put some oil in the pan. It should be pretty hot by now. So we're just going to take some of the carp flays. A little scale in there. The scales are huge on carp. Just start taking some of the flay, cutting it up, putting it in the egg wash. Carp flays are really big. And did you, if you guys could hear that, that's, there was a bone that I was cutting through there. These have the Y bones in them, but I found that it's best to leave them in the flay until you're eating them. So we'll go through that though. But with these flays, you can feel the Y bones right there. That's what's holding it together is where the Y bone is. So I don't want to mash up the bones too much or anything. Just going to go ahead and cut through them. Keep on placing them in there. If you'll notice right on here, this stuff, I don't know if it's just fat or what, but I'm going to try to take all that off. It doesn't look too appetizing. That kind of yellow meat. Or the yellow on the meat. Might just be fat and it might be no big deal, but I don't really want to take the chance of messing everything up just with that. So we'll go ahead and cut that out. We'll go ahead and try one of these pieces in there out of the egg wash right into the breading. 
Then we're going to try to see. Oh, yeah, that's all ready. Should be sizzling good if it's ready. Hey, everyone. So we cooked the fish and we're ready to taste it now. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous about tasting it. I don't know how this is going to be. I've never had carp before. As you see here, everything looks good. The fish looks a little bit different. It's not it's not real white like a lot of other fish are and there are going to be bones in some of this so it's just really a different look than what we're used to we're going to try it and we're going to see what we think so you want to try a piece daxton mm -hmm. now we got to watch out for the bones in some of this i don't know if there's going to be bones in this one or not but in some of them you can feel like some of the thicker ones What do you think, Daxton? Good. Yeah, I mean, really, that that part was really good. I think I made the breading a little salty, didn't I? Yeah. I mean, honestly, guys, this is not bad tasting fish. I think it tastes just fine. Good. Just found one of the bones. That's what one of the bones looks like. Yep, there's another bone sticking out right there. That's almost a weird one. That almost looks like the end of a little tag on a piece of clothing so watch out for the bones daxon okay so there's the y bones guys these are why they say that you can't take them out before because they'll just break off like that that you can't really take them out before they're not really big enough if you look in here that's what they talk about the y bones you see them kind of like that no We're just going to pick them out to see how many of them we have in here. So you can see all these right here. So you can pick them out after it's already cooked. Right like that. You just go down through them. They're in rows. Right there's more of them. But see, whenever you cook them, if you see how I'm pulling them out, they just pull right out. There's more of them. I can see how you couldn't get these out whenever it's raw. If you have kids eating this, it's probably best to pull the bones out of them before they eat them. Because some of them are kind of hard to feel until you've already kind of crunched them. Because they're not, some of them aren't real noticeable. So Daxon, I've got a question for you. What? How does the taste of this compare to catfish? What good is? You like this a lot better than catfish? Yeah. Yeah, guys, honestly, I like this carp better than I like catfish. I wouldn't say it's as good as, like, bluegill or crappie or bass, but, I mean, honestly, I think it's better than catfish, at least fried. And we're going to try other recipes in the future. So, guys, my recommendation is that I would definitely eat this again, and I would have no hesitation about it. And this isn't even, like, a real clean lake or anything. We catch these out of a muddy retention pond where there's almost zero water clarity. I don't know if it's because of the carp or because it's just so shallow and muddy. I'm sure the carp don't help and the carp are pretty thick in there. If you guys want to check out other Catch and Cook videos, be sure to check out our channel at Fishing Life 101. That's so <laughs> yeah. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And don't forget to... Click subscribe! <laughs> we'll see you next time, guys. See you next time, guys.